Jake was telling me, he was like, yeah, like, people will talk about the show and people are like, yeah, Shannon is so hot. Aww. Like, every straight woman that I know, that's their first comment really? on the, yeah, every, oh, like, it's so almost nice. immediate. I'm like, yeah, I forgot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to ATA Pod. I'm Danny Vega, also known as Mario, joined today by Luigi and Peach. Peach. It's me, Luigi. What does Peach say? Peach. They all Do you want to like kick Pokemon. Mario? Yeah. I don't know. Do what is, what? She's just kidnapped. Kate. Uh, she just got and, a really And high it's voice. patriarchal, by the way, isn't it? Of course, it's a damsel in distress, Always. reinforcing the idea that men are saviors. Absolutely. Well, they've, they've addressed that with Peach. Peach has saved herself in several plots oh, with that's Mario. Good. Oh, there we yeah. go. Paper Mario, I remember that. She's like, yeah. basically. Actually, oh, of the, course, the woman gets the paper version. No, no, she's, no, the <sighs> gag in Paper Mario is yeah. she keeps, like, she is capable of escaping Bowser at any point, but she keeps fucking with him to help Mario more. Like, She's Ooh. she's constantly sneaking out of her cell and fucking around and like making Bowser's life more difficult, even though she could escape at any point. So like, well, they've done a good job. They, making they Peach got a Metroid positive. Prime too, one of my favorite Samus, video games. Samus Aran, Samus, and she's a woman. She fucking crushes it in there. You'd be a good little. Samus. You would act. I I would nominate Shannon for a Samus uh, live action role for sure. Oh, I think wow. she can nail that. It. She and that would be her at her best because she's at, that suit covers her whole body, so no foot's coming out. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's zero, safe. I mean, zero suit Samus. Is like that's Shannon could cosplay as that no problem. So let's let's jump wow. into this point. Jake observed that you know you are building an army of simps. Yeah, I am? Oh yeah. yeah, we think that's happening. I'm what? with him. No, what are you talking about? You are you are absolutely beloved. You win over like all oh. all of the listener base is. They are ride or die for you. If Danny and I yeah. ever say anything <laughs> cross, they'll defend like, you. You know. <laughs> I didn't realize this. Where are you guys getting that info? The well, Discord. I also <laughs> think you might have. A fetish community building. We've got the feet thing. We've got oh, the, true, the pissing true. in the sinks. Like it's the fact that you have won over so many people. Like think about the blowback that you got for feet on an airplane, <laughs> and compare that to the piss gargoyle situation. Silence. Everybody is just immediately like, "Nah, that's fine. That's fine." Do you want to come pee in my sink? <laughs> <laughs> Please, we're baptize it. Yes. We wanted this shout Gladly. out. We forgot to mention this. Allie came to our live show. Thank yes. you so much for coming, Allie. It was great to meet you. She's from Florida. Yeah. And I think she had a, she told me she had a work thing up in San Francisco. She So she came down to a LA and looped her trip into so to come crazy. and see our live show. That's Thank you so much. It was so nice so meeting you. So flattering. Yeah. Gem and a half. All that good. All that jazz. Oh, Love yeah. to see it. I was all the way in Beatrice, Nebraska. Beatrice. And... <laughs> Shocker, uh, Anna came out to see me, brought her uh, cousin. Thank you so much, Anna. It was great to see you. So awesome. We'll get into some tour details, but something even crazier happened. I had to send this to uh, Janet over here. I, I was at an, I did another show, and after the show, um, this guy came up to me, and he was like, hey, I work in the kitchen here, and I listen to your podcast. Shut up. I just called my girlfriend, and she's going to come by. Oh, um, what? That's awesome. So he, he didn't even, like, mean to be there. No, he didn't even you. mean to be there. Whoa. And so they were like, can we send a message to Jake and Shannon? And I wanted to uh, play that for you guys. <laughs> and these guys wanted to say hi to Jake and Shannon. I said, we can send them a video right now. What do you I'm want to say? I'm obsessed with you. Love you guys. Your guys' takes are amazing. Jake, you're hilarious. 420 episodes, still my fave. Ooh, Shannon, cool. you're hot. I love you. See? Every time. <laughs> it's the first thing. <laughs> love you guys. Thanks for all the good content. That is true. <laughs> Oh my God! You guys are gems and a fucking half. That's awesome. Absolute gems. Just, just so made, sweet. just made my full, full week with that. I know. You love to such see it. Such a good feeling. It was crazy. I got, I got emotional. I almost cried actually with Anna being there because I was like, I'm in the middle of nowhere, and someone who listens to my pod is here. That is crazy. No offense, Nebraska. No offense. We got a big, <laughs> we got a big following in Beatrice. <laughs> Sure do. It's fun to say. Yeah, I wanted to uh, tell you guys a little bit about the tour. It actually made me kind of love the old America again, brought mm -hmm. us back. So real quick. Yeah. God did, bless. God bless her, you know? Yeah. Uh, I did this show and uh, the the booker informed me that we had this host, Dr. Mike, and he's kind of an older guy. And, uh, you know, me and the younger comic were like, who's this random like old guy hosting our show? 
and uh he was he was actually a really nice guy cool guy but we were we were being a little bit shitty about it you know and uh, mm-hmm. one thing i noticed he did is he introduced himself to everyone in the audience you know before the show and we're like okay and then he did this thing of like i know everybody's name and we we're like how corny is that meeting everyone kind of talking shit so anyway uh, the next day, we went out to uh, Great Bend, Kansas, mm-hmm. and this is a free show, which is a little bit different. So no one's invested, mm. and uh, we bombed. What did not go well? <laughs> well, if you're gonna bomb somewhere, it's best that it's the not paid show. Yeah, yeah. Nobody paid to be there, so I did make the classic. We'll be offering refunds, no problem. Nice. Folks. <laughs> Gotta say it. Also, we paid twelve dollars for a lunch for two there, which was insane. Yeah, insane. I gave the woman a twenty dollar bill and she was like are you sure and i was like ma'am this is how much a single lunch costs please take this this would be me stiffing on a tip that's crazy (laughs) yeah um but it was a good humbling moment and a learning moment because after that show i was like well what could we have done to prevent the bomb because the main thing is it it felt like you know we're in these super red towns we're the two guys from la and so i uh, i was like you know dr mike we were mocking him and our hubris blinded us to his brilliance Mm -hmm. and after every other show i made a point of introducing myself and saying hello to every single person before the show and it was a gravy train really fun really fun yeah it's so like brave of you to go and do that like i really commend you so brave it's i don't know if i could take brave but i'll handle it not to talk sorry 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 not to talk to the people i i I meant to do the tour in general oh thank you shannon like i think that's so cool that you did that I loved it. I mean, I I think it it did make me remember. I think we live in this red versus blue mentality and there's them out there and us Mm -hmm. here and they're. But it made me realize, like, you know, it's this like concept of cruel optimism I've been talking about where it's like in the end, like. The, there's signs everywhere for Trump there. If you turn on the radio, it's like the mo- it's like a parody of what you would expect. You yeah. know, it's just like, and the leftists mm-hmm. want to turn this into a godless orgy, oh, you know, man. and it's just like this. And you're like, well, of course they think that. That's what's that's what's in yeah. the water out yeah. here, you know. It's on the radio. And it made me feel this sense of connection where I'm like, look, we're all on the same fucking team, God damn it. We're all Americans. Yeah. We, all, we all pretty much want the same things, you know. Totally. We think we don't. We're all just humans at the end of the day and when you can really sit down and talk to each other you can pretty much like anyone except for billionaires what? The, yeah. yeah. No. There, well, there was no billionaires at the shows. Um, they shouldn't The exist. Oracle of Omaha did not show up, unfortunately. Um, oh, <laughs> Warren Buffett? That That's Warren Buffett. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't know that was one of his nicknames. That was actually one of my jokes that will probably die now because I don't know where it can live, but it was uh, it was the classic Omaha versus Des Moines. That's right. Oh, I cranked yeah. that bad boy out because I think Omaha has a lot more handles on it. It's got Warren Buffett and it's got steak. Everybody knows Omaha steak. True. What does Des Moines have? Nothing. It's got... It's actually pronounced Des Moines. Fuck you, Des Moines. That's yeah, how I say yeah, it. Des Moines. You, you don't get to tell anybody how to tell uh, the right way to say Des Moines <laughs> when your town is spelled the way it's spelled. Yeah. And Isn't it's it pronounced. French? Why are you acting Probably. French? Which is weird that there's a French town in Iowa. That what is, are you doing? <laughs> but I think they're kind of almost saying it correctly, right? No, they are saying it right, but it's just a weird branding move for essentially Nebraska Part Two. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm pandering a little bit. We didn't go to I- this. Ah, is- Jacques Davy, of course, yeah. I am from <laughs> That's where he's from. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be it. Of course, it only makes sense. Yes. And I, I loved picking up the local lore. One of the classic jokes is that uh, so Nebraska and Iowa have like a, a college rivalry, and I was like, what's oh, yeah. a, what? I didn't understand what that was about and it's because there's no professional sports team so people glom on to the college teams oh, um, yes. so they have like this friendly rivalry because even even nebraska knows that i was literally the same fucking place it's just yeah a little bit over mm-hmm. uh, but their they, corn's different yeah exactly yeah <laughs> they say uh iowa stands for idiots outside wandering around this is uh, one of the pretty, classic yeah, dad jokes that's pretty there. good yeah, that's yeah, yeah, whoever it. thought of that the first time was just Ooh. like oh i got one that's something timmy <laughs> put, new, put that on a bumper sticker <laughs> I'd buy that shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, I'm going to do more of it. I'm going to uh, a couple of random towns in Arizona and New Mexico, and I'm going to Washington in August. So, oh, uh, yeah, cool. I got to oh, get ahead of it. Hopefully, it. I can see some of you guys. I would love to yeah. do that. Yeah. See the description for more tour dates. That would be awesome. Um, and also, 
We have someone else that just got up on stage. Oh, shucks. Very exciting. A couple weeks ago. Oh, shucks. I the might man have seen himself? me advertising it, but I had a variety show that I've been doing for a few years now. And it's uh, stand up characters, music, sometimes poetry, dance called Not Too Polished. It's a great, it, great community. Really, it, really cool show. Thank you. And it's really great for people who are like trying new things out. I mean, the name is Not Too Polished. So all the acts and were so good. That's too. cute. Yeah, yeah, it went really well. It was like the old days. It's taken a little while after COVID to get back up on it. But um, Jake Davis got up after eight years, nine eight years. years, eight years wow. away. Yeah. Hard to believe. And yeah, he it flew by. did amazing. It felt really good. It was a, it was the perfect environment to do it again but yeah i have a really complicated feeling towards stand up it was what i thought i was put on this earth to do and mm. then one day i just didn't want to do it anymore and there's a lot of very complicated personal reasons to tie into you that were pushed into it to I was an pushed extent into it. I was, yeah. it was very much the trope of you know um the kid being forced to play sports because he's really good at it and uh, basically i had a i had a showbiz parent who saw mm. that as my take it to fame and there was a lot of pressure involved i i never really felt like i was doing it for me and um i i didn't know that i was dealing with those feelings when i walked away from it but the time away from it made that much clearer and realizing like oh this thing that i was I was really good at i was never really doing because i wanted to do it mm. so this was the first time i've gotten up ever where i was doing it just, just for myself yeah, and just for fun yeah and it, and it was a blast i had a great time i think i did about seven minutes so i went over by two but i was i was but pretty that was totally fine i mean we had enough time too. like we cushioned it a lot sure and i was like happy to i saw the light and I, yeah i saw the light and i got i think i got off within like two minutes of the yeah light. but anyway um the crowd was fucking great i you know nothing bombed some stuff didn't hit as hard as i thought it would but i got yeah. some really solid laughs yeah and he did amazing and your presence is just incredible up there incredible. and your voice it's is amazing and I, felt, I i felt i liked this version of my comedy even though it wasn't as polished even mm. though it wasn't as sharp this felt more like me this felt yeah. like it was my voice it was more authentic to who i was and a big part of why i walked away was because all i had ever really done at the point where i stopped was try to be a comedian that was really all my professional effort. right right so a big part of it was like i need to walk away from this because who wants who wants to hear from the perspective of somebody who hasn't done anything mm, else but this true, you have to live true. life a little bit to yeah because you started when you were like what 17 my first my first 18? first show was 14 oh, and 14. Wow. I, I would get up wherever i could it's harder when you're that young but then i got really into it around 17. there's a oh, do or awesome. die mentality with stand up and i think a lot of especially like younger people who are into it myself included when i was young are like oh you don't do it anymore like eh, and there's a mm. shittiness but but a fair number of people, I think, also say, like, look, it's not going anywhere. It's yeah. always been here. It's it's like one of the most human things. You know, it's listening to the tales of the elders. It's fucking yeah. classic. And I, I think that's the last so the last thing anybody wants to be is that comedian outside of the club that's acting like he's like a retired punk rock star that's mm. just sucking down cigarettes. Like, yeah, I'll tell you, man, if you don't fucking die hungry, yeah, you're yeah. not a real comic, yeah. man. My wife left me because I can't walk away from this. I want it more. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. Because well, I used to do stand up like when between like 24 and 27 ish on and off. Like I wasn't out there every single night or anything like that. But it, it was never really my dream to like be a stand up comedian. I never wanted that. I always wanted to be an actor, a comedic actor. But um, and it was just like. I didn't really like the environment that much. Yeah. And then I did feel like I was like, oh, I to really make this, I need to be out there like every night. And I just don't like doing things like super late into the night and like constantly. And I was like, these people want it more than me. I'm just doing it to like kind of get more confidence on stage yeah, build, and be build, comfortable build up your in front of people. So I just stopped doing it. But we were just talking about it and I might try it at my show sometime. Well, and that's what I've realized too, you know, cause I'll beat myself up. You know, I'm not in the LA scene at all. You know, mm. I also have like New York superiority. I'm like, <laughs> Oh, the LA scene. That's cute. You do comedy in LA. Oh, you know, like I have that. Wow. But I, I mean, it, it, the thing about that I've realized is like you, people have this idea of like, you know, it's called making it for a reason you're making it. And like, you are making it, you know, you're making it your own Shannon by doing your variety show 
and like yeah. by doing this show like we're all ma we're literally making something yeah we're doing yeah. it and i just feel like look and and i do have friends out there grinding you know christy's grinding i wish mm -hmm. her the best hope she fucking climbs totally. into the scene but She's in the great. end the point of doing art of any art is to connect with people exactly. and however you do that it doesn't fucking matter yeah. if you want to be the cool scene kid go for it and like i hope i hope you find your dreams and the hipsters love you but yeah, yeah. i'm when, tired when, <laughs> when any, not just comedians but when anybody in performing pursuits starts like chest pounding and like posturing about like how much they've ruined their fucking life pursuing this and i always just kind of have you ever been to the zoo when you see like the chimps or the gorillas not fighting but like oh, this is my this is my space yeah, like throwing yeah, yeah. leaves up in the air and then they just kind of sit down and cross their arms and just, yeah i won i won that yeah. like all right if that makes you feel better right yeah. right and also like i was also in the ucb scene too and like groundlings a little bit and I, I just like almost didn't really enjoy hanging out with with all of those guys in a group. And but it was like everyone's trying to make everyone laugh so hard. Yeah. And I'm like, guys, can we just chill and have a good time together? Like, and that was sort of how I felt like with stand up, too, it was just like its own toxic, like kind of weird hating each other environment. It's tough. You got to find the right group. There's click. There's clickishness. You could find a good click and that can work out. Yeah. But you can also find the wrong click. You know, I've had a lot of friends come and go which does make me sad and like it's it turns into a very high schoolish thing it it, it can because like I, I would never want to shit on anyone because like being part of a community is so huge yeah. i mean we're so fortunate with this show you know we basically ha we have a community the listeners yeah. you know we love y'all and, and it, we're so lucky that we were able like i mean you did all the heavy lifting like oh, it, thank we you. were so we were in like the best position ever because i've always wanted to host a podcast yeah but it was like so daunting thinking of like starting it up so right. i seriously commend you for how big you've grown this and the yeah, fact that we really were able impressive. to just step in is a dream and well, I, I didn't even really want to be on a podcast I just needed an outlet to do silly voices so this worked yeah, out great were, for everybody he was doing, I was, he was a silly boy <laughs> he had to get it out don't try it out silly this goose yeah well, I mean no. I, I do tell listeners because I, I think the the one thing I've learned doing comedy is this the secret the unsexy secret it's it's the secret to almost everything and nobody wants to do it it's just to be consistent do the work Mm. There's no there's no golden path. It's doing the damn work and doing it consistently, you know, and so I, I have I have a deal and I'll put this out to any one of you. If you want to start a podcast, and you want to promote it on this podcast. No problem. Put out 50 episodes, put out 50 episodes. That's one a week, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. that's it, because you know what? The vast majority and I and I've done this myself. You know, I've started seven podcasts and six of them went nowhere, but a couple of them oh, did really? get to 50 episodes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. Know that. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's just if you put in the effort like and, and you get into doing this to find a community, not to make it big, to make an effect on one person. Mm -hmm. This kind of feeds into this whole thing that I'm talking about, too. Like when you stop thinking about people as people or as numbers or engagements and you start thinking like, well, what about if I just go up to this one guy and shake his hand and make this one yeah. guy's day? You, It's like so clarifying because it's like deeply humbling. That's like, how I God. approach sales. I don't totally. approach the people in the accounts as the buyer or the account or the person I have to sell to. Oh, that's just Josh. Yeah. That's yeah. Josh. And I'm just going to go in and see how Josh is doing. Yep. And we'll discuss what we need to discuss while I'm in there. But if you right. go in with this like hyper focused plan, like like you're saying, like analyzing everything, like it's Absolutely. all numbers, it totally takes you it's out of reality. Humans. And I think the when you treat everyone like a boss or a client or something like that and you're just treating them as a person like i think they like that so much more and you'll Absolutely. get so much further ahead in life if you're just like talking to them like you're a person i'm a person how you doing yeah. and it comes off so confident too not to quote a linkedin post because but <laughs> i read this thing and they were like Corpo the, simp. The, yeah the secret to networking is like don't don't be networking no. you know go just to someone and friendship. be like oh hey i saw you like uh the dodgers you know i'm a big fan you know or whatever mm. go it you go in with something Sports else yeah. and astrology it's the like those are the three best tools in anybody's what were those? sports D D and astrology those are the three Jay. no those are i'm saying if you can get it <laughs> if you can get talking things. about any of those three things You're in a sales go, environment okay, okay. or just get high with them well sure that yeah. uh, drugs no sometimes cigarettes are cigarettes I, that people don't talk I've about that high with buyers before which like i i don't do when i'm out in the field but if i'm at like a convention or something i'll get high with the buyer and then suddenly they start talking to me about their shit and it's just like whoa 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 let's go back to what we just talked about work wow. Uh, yeah, that so, can yeah. always happen too. A trauma dump. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh, oh no, it's I'm, all coming out. 
I'm your only friend. Oh no, <laughs> that's not what I wanted. Where's the escape hatch? <laughs> What out of this? That I not to promote smoking. And by the way, don't smoke marijuana. Your brain isn't fully developed. Most of you wait till you're 25. 25 and and beyond. Go nuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, cigarettes. You go outside and there's all the other smokers out there. You know, that's that's kind of a socially connected thing. I know. I guess that's the idea of bars as well. But yeah, I wish cigarettes like I liked the taste and all of it better. Well, I guess I don't because I don't want to be addicted. Disgusting. But I do like the culture a little bit. Like the yeah. balcony. Like I have a balcony and I'm like, if I was a smoker, I'd be out on this balcony all the time. I I actually saw in Vegas uh, tobacco list cigarettes. Oh, that you light. I almost yeah, bought them just for shits and giggles. Still. I don't it's know what they are. Asbestos. I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, what it's all the asbestos they've gotten rid of over the years. Like, we got to do something. Well, now with we this. have a place for it. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for listening. Please rate, review, and subscribe. Five stars. Thank you. And join us on Patreon. We're doing monthly ish happy hours again. Mm-hmm. We are back on every the three to five weeks. Jake, I feel like that's a good. To what? That's monthly ish. All right. Every it's three to five weeks. So I, think that's I am fair. willing to commit to monthly, so I will be there. I know you guys want your Jan in action as well. But, <laughs> yeah, Jan in action. And um, please follow us on Instagram and TikTok. We're trying to grow that shit. Yeah, help us I'm out. I'm making TikTok videos now, guys. Yes. Add videos. us on LinkedIn. I'm taking over the oh, yeah. AIT pod LinkedIn. LinkedIn. That's terrifying. <laughs> Um, but yeah, over 150 bonus episodes. It's only five bucks a month. Big boneyard, uh, get in it. Pretty great, mm-hmm. damn deal. Hell yeah, I would do it. Oh wait, actually, I didn't do it when I was a fan. Don't say <laughs> that. That why would you Don't say tell that? Him. Don't tell <laughs> him. It had nothing to do with you guys. It's just when I when I found out about your pot, it was like COVID. I don't have that money. Fair. Uh, my feelings are hurt. <laughs> Our second story of the day: AITA for telling my girlfriend i think i'm smarter than her and speaking of happy hours we got this on am i the devil and we did it at the oh, happy hour the happy hour and it got crazy in there you guys sure did but first folks here we go aita for deleting a video of myself from my friend's phone that he took while i was drunk my friend filmed me while i was drunk confessing to loving him since we were kids it isn't something i ever would have said to him sober and i absolutely can't let anybody else see that video because he's seeing my best friend it would hurt her if she saw it i asked him to delete it multiple times but he would always turn it into a joke and refuse he promised he wouldn't show it to anybody else but he's watched it in front of me in places where anybody could have overheard so i didn't trust him and i secretly deleted it from his phone He's mad at me for taking his phone, deleting the video, and because he thinks I looked at other things in it, the only thing I did was delete the video, but he doesn't believe me. My best friend knows he's mad at me, but doesn't know why, but he threatened to tell her and is claiming he had the video backed up, which I think is shitty of him. I don't plan to apologize because I feel like he forced my hand as he should have deleted it when I asked him to, but A-I-T-A... I mean, I think the only reason why he is keeping this video on his phone is for his freaking ego. He wants to okay. keep the video so he can just watch it. I think he's also. That's fair. I think he's also excited by what's on that video. I mean, yeah. you got a girl uh, saying she's loved you her whole life. That's, yeah. I, think, I think there's some reciprocation there that he's oh, not of course. Oh. There's never zero, right? Yeah. You know, there's always a little. Oh, there spark. can be zero. Your, well, no, yeah, if they're there your friend, if they're your friend, there's no. probably not zero. I yes. think I think that there is some longing on his end in the part that sure. skeezes me out about it and where. In normal circumstances, without a lot of the details that are present here, I would be fully in favor of somebody deleting media that's them that they don't want anyone else to see of course I'm, I, in like if we don't have all the details that we have on right. this particular story i think that it's a personally perfectly reasonable thing for somebody to delete a video that out of context could make them look really really shitty and they're not doing a crime they're not doing anything that's like harmful to anyone else um but there's a ton of details involved here that make we're going to get into those. But, oh. but playing it as it lays, I, I do think, you know, what did he do? He flaunted it, which I That's think is pretty, greasy. pretty greasy. Real greasy. Gross. To play it in front of her again. And that laugh feels about it. It's so yeah, that's a lot. And you're you're risking a lot between your best between. Uh, your girlfriend and her best friend. A slight, slight uh, alter alteration to what you just said. Your girlfriend and the girl that you want to have sex, sex with. with. Mm. Yeah, honey. 
Yeah, that's possible. I do think it is a violation to go into someone's phone and delete something that's theirs, but I can kind of cancel that yeah, out. It's a little, if he hadn't like, been flaunting, if, if she yeah. just yeah. went in and no, deleted it. I, I think she still should have because, yes, it's quote unquote his video, but it's of her. You're not allowed to. Are you allowed I, to just film people? I, guess I think you good, are, depends, right? good rule. Depends. Good rule of thumb. I think across the board, without like, unless there is any asterisk on it, I think that women in particular, any subjugated group who's being filmed without their knowledge, uh, I think there's a claim there of like, uh, you don't yeah, get, get this power phone. over me too. Uh, you don't yeah, also you seen, get this power. Haven't you ever over seen me. those videos of women being like, "No, give me your phone. I'm deleting that picture right now" because they took like a picture of them yeah well okay california is a state that is actually very protective about it it's a two-party consent state yeah. which means you can't record a phone call you can't record nothing without, i think that that is 100 how it should be that's not how it is everywhere you got someone doing something that ultimately could be harmless if it's not distributed mm -hmm. let's control the harm here let's let's give in to her ask. I, I think yeah. that's the right thing to do. Yeah. I yes. mean, I also think if he's being responsible, this is not a healthy friendship for her. No. no. It's no, not. No, not at all. I think that uh, that's a fairly, really, we don't know, we don't, yeah, we don't know how old they are. This sounds like mm, early 20s. Sounds, yeah. That's pretty yeah. mature. I, I guess 22, 23. It takes a while to develop the maturity to realize yeah. like you can't, you can't string someone along who's in love with you. It's really fucked up. You yeah. got to yeah. You got to cut them off. You Especially making do. it a joke is that's, that's fucked that that's just like another level to it yeah turning it into a joke but again i think he i think he 100 percent does reciprocate here and that's part of why he keeps watching it here's the thing mm, yeah. the details oh or that's, just the ego thing i think it's an ego th well he's flaunting it in front of her because he kind of controls her right he knows but, he knows that she's oh yeah, he's got this him. blackmail on her he's basically got, well he's got blackmail and he knows that she's in love with However, her yeah. within the deep the comments there lies the juice maximum cupcake 1989 <laughs> Oh, but isn't it fun when OP leaves out the juice? How dare you, OP? By their own admission, the boyfriend took the video as proof that nothing happened between them when OP drunkenly tried to convince him to take a shower together. Now, the friend slash girlfriend is suspicious and there's no video to show what went down. OP is an asshole too. OP responded, mm. I didn't try to convince him to take a shower together. I wanted to have a shower alone and he was telling me it was a bad idea. What was a bad idea to take a shower alone? Well, that yeah, I guess that the implication there is that he wanted to take it with yeah her. but why would he keep the video i mean i guess the video doesn't say that the video part. the video it changes the narrative to she was coming on to me mm. and she was and what she did was wrong gotcha. by the way it was wrong yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah oh yeah definitely you keep those feelings buried deep if he's dating your best friend yeah that's something yeah. where being drunk doesn't affect it it's like you're still saying it is she an asshole for confessing to loving her bff's bf who is also a friend mm. i kind of feel like she is there yeah. is a healthy That's way a to do that and it's definitely not this i don't know that there's a healthy, know, the healthy way to do, way to do it is saying like hey look i have to own up i have really complicated feelings and i think i need to step out of this relationship because it's not fair to you i can't be your around partner. your boyfriend no, i think that you shouldn't even tell him that and just you tell step her away. You tell she's her. your friend i don't think you should tell yeah. either Oh, you could talk but to the friend and be like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You don't right, need to go. Right. So then you could just be like, look, I, I've known your boyfriend a long time. I have some complicated feelings for him. And I just, I can't really be around him in good conscience. I, I love you. I still want to be friends with you. You're I just being, can't be around being your honest, boyfriend. You're not being damaging. You're it's not fine. trying to fuck anything up. Like, that's the response. But telling the boyfriend is do. wrong. I, yeah. I think that's a ding well, on OP. Because, yeah, you're right. It would be weird if it's like all of a sudden you're not talking to me anymore. Like, I remember uh, two of my friends, he was in love with her and she, he was the officiant at her wedding Oof. and then like that within stings. that year he was then backing away like from their relationship and she was his friend and was like i don't understand what's going on like why are you being weird towards me and so he had to tell her the truth like look yeah. i'm in love with you so i can't talk to you anymore and he officiated their wedding though that's, like, like, that's clean I'm like, though why did you even take that open i mean maybe he didn't know then it's I like the, know. they handed him a, a metaphorical gun just like hey can you shoot your love <laughs> in the yeah, head yeah, in yeah. front of everybody <laughs> yeah. so that i can be married <laughs> you know you're rewatching that wedding tape with new eyes there's actually i don't <laughs> want to get i know it kind of ruined it for them they're divorced now actually had nothing, oh, to, had nothing oh, to do with him boy. uh i divorced him too uh no i we i don't want to get too long in the weeds in this but at the school that i went to there was a priest who would always always tell the same anecdote about how before he swore took his oath to be a priest he had this like on again off again sweetheart thing going on and he ultimately mm. decided to go down the 
the path priest of being a priest. Ugh. And then they kept in touch and they were like, his story like clearly shows there was always a flirtation there. Mm. And then the story ends with her asking him to officiate her wedding. And he tries to spin it like, and that is what God's love is. It's unconditional. And it's just like, Father Norm, you've told us this story like six times. Oh, yeah. I don't think guy. this is the story you think it is. Oh, my I hate God. when people do that. That's not the story. The story is more about you than what you think is happening. Exactly. Frank Beans, 82. She was trying to get him, get with him while drunk. I'm so confused how everyone is making him the bad guy because he recorded this video to protect himself. That's fair, but I still can't. I, I still think he could have deleted to it protect at that himself. point. Yeah. And for, protect himself from what? Like... You two were the only two in the room. Like, well, how like I this... said, it changes the narrative because it seems yeah. to be that there was this inkling that his girlfriend would have got that there was something that went down. Yeah, like yeah. just delete so all evidence there's... and you never have to address it. Well, no, that. but the video exculpates him because he goes, oh, really? You think I did something? Well, listen. Yeah, but where would she have heard it? That anything went down between the two of them if they were the only two there? Well, there's this thing about the shower. I know, but it was just them. I know, but the, you don't I see how the video would shift the story oh, as like a piece if, of if evidence. Like if OP went and told the best friend, like, hey, your boyfriend tried to come or on. Or whatever, me. yeah. If she's like, I, I heard you guys were together for a while. And he's like, oh, okay. oh, well, whatever you heard, let me show you this video and I'll tell you a little bit about what happened that And night. I'd be more down for that defense if he wasn't gloating about it and watching yes. it in front of her. And, and if shit, also the video literally the defense, wasn't of her admitting her love for her best friend's boyfriend. Like, imagine being like, oh, well, look, nothing happened between us, but here, here she is confessing her love to me but that's excellent you don't see how that's exculpating well that makes I him think... look good because it's like well she came on to me oh yeah yeah Right. Dubious Cordate writes, wow, no, NTA, but your friend is an asshole for not deleting the video. Watching it in front of you after you asked him to delete it was straight up emotional blackmail. I'm with that. The gloating was a bridge much too far. If he just kept yeah. the video and he's like, I need and this for I my own this. protection. That's why I think these no. guys, there's some skeezy stuff going he's on here. He's lying that, that, that it's to protect himself for that. It's literally because he's got an ego. He's got an ego boost from this. I, and I think he both probably has true. feelings for her. I think both things are true. I think that his, uh, his, uh, uh, significant other has been aware that there's weirdness going on here. I don't think these are the only two incidents with these two. No, I think course, they've yeah, been orbiting each other in this eyes, weird little game. There's been yeah. looks, there's been conversations that were odd. I don't think his primary motivation for keeping it is to defend himself. I think that that might be what he's telling himself. I think the primary reason he kept it is because it was super gratifying to, for him to see her say that. Well, it both can be true too. Yeah, no, you I know, think they're both I, true. I, I think that when people are in this position, it takes a real level of maturity to go to the person who's in love with you who by the way is like a little puppy dog for you mm -hmm. and go hey i don't think you can be around me anymore it's a tough thing to do yep. yeah because you're in a position of power that person will will that person's got eyes on you you know what i mean yeah. totally takes a lot of maturity uh kitty cat 782 responded based on the video i think he started filming to cover his own tracks because in the beginning i was insisting on having a shower he was trying to convince me it was a bad idea i think he was filming so he had proof he never did anything in case i forgot what happened Ooh. so the video could have been something that was recorded for a good reason especially if op was like sloppy drunk i mean it sounds like they were not in their yeah right. they're not Mines. in good judgment no Nonetheless, I think we are dinging on confessing your love to your best friend's boyfriend. Not okay. Mm -hmm. Not okay. Fucked yeah. up. And on the gloating. And yep. for these reasons, I think we actually are very aligned here. AITA for deleting a vid of myself from my friend's phone that he took while I was a drunk. We agree. E-S-H. -E oh, Where were you? What? I thought we were going NTA. I thought it was E-S-H. E -S -H. Okay, E-S-H. Right? Yeah. Are you with us or are you disagreeing? Um, yeah, I'm cool with that. They're both assholes. Yeah. I still think she's fine to do what she did, though. But with all this other proof, like, yeah, I guess we could do ASH. But well, I think... we're digging her for confessing her love. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. ESH. Woo-woo! Okay. <laughs> we came around, folks. <laughs> That's my favorite Shannon uh oh moment of what? What? Yes, yeah, yes, 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 rabble, rabble, yes, yes. Yeah, we got there. I'm excited for this one. Um, but guys, please rate, review, subscribe, join us on Patreon. Over 150 bonus episodes, vibrant Discord community, monthly ish happy hours every five weeks for Jake. And we will see you three there. Three to five weeks. Three, three to, to five, five weeks. weeks. Here it's reasonable. We go. go. AITA for telling my girlfriend I think I'm smarter than her. Uh oh. <laughs> I have. Yeek. 
I've always firmly believed honesty is the most important trait you can have in a relationship. If you're honest, things will work out for the best. If being honest ruins the relationship, you weren't meant for each other, and it's better to realize that sooner than later, so you can respectfully break things off and move on. I'm not exact. I'm not excessively callous, though. <laughs> excessively. Saw that coming. Saw uh, that coming. I don't just bring up truths out of the blue and justify them because they're true. I'd never randomly call someone ugly even if they were ugly but if they asked me to be for my honest opinion i wouldn't lie to them that brings us to a conversation i was having last night with my long-term partner long story short i had a pretty major academic success that i was very pleased about and she told me that sometimes that she sometimes felt a bit intellectually insecure compared to me. So I told her that she's one of the smartest people I know, and I'm very impressed with her intelligence. And there's also endless other areas where I'm useless and she's incredibly gifted and talented. Unfortunately, she then straight up asked whether I thought I was smarter than her. I tried a bit of a dodge by telling her that there were lots of different types of intelligence and it's a really broad range, but that non-answer didn't seem to satisfy her. So when she asked again, I told her yes. Obviously, she didn't react great and left in a big huff, and she's been a bit distant since then. I've never lied to her, and I'm not going to start, but it's left me wondering. AITA? Ooh. Oh, uh, well, this one was on Am I the Devil? So the... So Reddit. The idea was that this OP is the devil. Yeah, so Reddit really went asshole on this one. But we on the Discord last night had some lot differing of good opinions. points got brought up on that there Discord happy hour. Yeah. On the one hand, let's start with how this is a little devilish. It mm -hmm. is a very mean thing to say. Yeah. It's not nice. Um, I also think that OP could have gone farther on his little point here. There's different types of intelligences. I don't think we're doing anything productive by creating a little hierarchy of who's smarter than who. Mm. The point I made at the Discord last night, which actually nobody laughed at, so I don't know why I'm restating it, but here we go. <laughs> Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, widely considered the smartest guy. Yeah? How was he with kids? Could he run a daycare? Huh? I, I, was, I don't think he could. I was in the kitchen when you said that, and I had the thought of like, I don't know, man. I could see Albert Einstein being great with kids. Like that'd be fun. He wouldn't might it? Be. <laughs> but point is, one, two, three, all eyes on me. Like just like really getting into he it. He wouldn't say that though. He would be like E equals MC squared. No, that's everyone, not his whole. That's every, not his only that's thing. That's his whole thing. He's a, He's a one guy. hit wonder. <laughs> Fuck Albert Einstein. No. I, I just think, look, there's a, here's a better example. Mark Zux, right? This guy is obviously very bright. He's good at the computer. Yeah. You put him on a video with sausages. Remember the sausage video? You guys ever no. seen the sausage video? He's like making sausages in his backyard and like it's like a live streamed Facebook video and he's like every seven seconds he's like making sausages and making <laughs> sausages and like people just cut out him saying making sausages. It's like a okay. super cut. He's a weird alienish individual. Okay. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm just saying, you know, Mark Zuck's not very good at, for instance, giving a speech. Blinking. Blinking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the skill what of did blinking. What Zuckerberg have to do with the sausage guy? That was Zuckerberg. That was the sausage guy. Zuckerberg know, is the sausage guy. Oh, you think they are the same alien? No, the video... <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg is widely considered to be a very odd individual. Yes. And the sausage video was a video of him. That was him. He was the sausage guy. Oh, it was him? Yes, yes. It was not like, what, back in the day? Yeah, it went viral because people cut it up and he's like, sausages. Wait, oh, before no, he, no, he this is even after was he's, This yeah, is after he, was he ruined the world. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> oh, like, I'm we so dug confused. this up on Mark we Zuckerberg. Got we got him. He's he put, a weird sausage guy. He, he put it out into the world. <laughs> okay, I got to look this up later. Yeah, like he's just an I don't odd buy you know. for one second that he can digest food. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure we could come up with other examples. I mean, Neil deGrasse Tyson, I think, is another one. Obviously, the guy's brilliant, but, like, his little fucking jokes on Twitter, I'm like, shut the I, fuck I, up. I, I don't oh, care, I man. You're fit. I, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson can do whatever he wants. I think he's fucking cool as shit. Yeah, I, I don't care best. how, like, weird he comes across on Twitter. He steals like, tweets, too, by the way. Oh, he does. Uh, okay. He's, he's not a, a fucking stand-up. He's an astrologer. Yeah, that's my point. There's different kinds of intelligence. Astro uh, cosmologist. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, astrology's the, yeah. the, the CJ, the you're good at stand up not knowing the names of guy. science. I'm not a name and guy. That's yeah. the other guy. What's his name? <laughs> Webster. Yeah. Webster Dictionary. Webster, he knew how to name shit. Yeah. <laughs> 
but we all agree guys intelligent there's no point in making the intelligence hierarchy that's stupid no and also I'm at the end sure of the day did. it's just his opinion but i i don't think he was necessarily doing that he's just saying there are different types of intelligence well, no, he wasn't going far enough for me oh, that's my issue when you okay. when you ask someone are you smarter than me you're you're buying into this hierarchy of smartness I think that's ridiculous. I, yeah, it, it's also it's so subjective. Well, and it's there's also no way to know. There's no, it's so subjective, and it's also it's very specialized as well, right? Like mm. Albert Einstein is great at math and cosmology, but he didn't know how to use a computer. He couldn't have, well, so he and, wasn't a computer scientist, and right? To kind like, of bring it back to the conflict here. I I missed a chunk of this because I I heard him rebuff the conflict I, the, he was trying to avoid this fight multiple i i heard it the one time and i was like okay well he did it the one time he did it twice yep. two separate occasions here he yeah. gave perfectly and as we were saying last night don't ask questions you don't want to know the answer to. well to ask once and then he said you True. know he complimented her you're one of the smartest people i know smartest i'm very impressed knows. endless areas where i'm useless and she's gifted and talented and then she's yes yeah, so you're right it was twice but that's my one ding on this guy i think i think you should re-examine your beliefs if you're putting yourself in any kind of a hierarchy you know earning is another one. Oh, i make more money than other people therefore i'm more important yeah. but you I fucking clown but that's the thing is you i don't clown. think not how he's money works. doing that i think she's doing no that. he's doing it too he's buying into the hierarchy that's my one ding on i him. know but it's like come on i can I, imagine I just am missing the part too. where he's saying that it's more my intelligence is more he's valuable better. he's not i'm he's not saying that. he ended up telling her that he's smarter than her so well he, yeah but after the third pride. like corner. yes but he buys into the hierarchy otherwise he wouldn't have said yes he would have said yes, i don't but there actually are people that are smarter than other people why what gives you the right to say that i mean i think it is just like there on there what, is on what grounds of different though? like um intelligence in certain areas you don't think I, I, you can in be, certain areas that is what i'm saying is yeah. that intelligence is too broad to boil it down to am i smarter than you oh, it's just like as an umbrella yeah, term. If, yes. I, if, yes. if aliens came to the planet tomorrow and said hey we're going to have a Jake Davis. We're going to roast you. And if the roast isn't good, we're going to destroy humanity. I'm not going to go out and get a math, a mathematician. I'm going to get Don Rickles to run the roast. Like exactly. That. Right. There's but different also, tasks. I mean, that was a long walk for my Don example. Rickles. That's know, a good but, roast. But Don does Rickles. have to be some people that are just like, I mean, what's a IQ test and an EQ test that well, but IQ has been used to, you know, Im imply racism and all these things. Yeah, and I, in the end, any test you build is, is laden with your own subjectivity, right? Like, yeah, but there are people that like are like, it is just a fact that they are more intelligent. At than some how is that a fact? Well, it's a construct. It's something it's a that, construct. That's, Intelligence is a construct. But haven't you met people that you're just like, oh, they don't have a lot going on upstairs. That's your read. And then like, oh, look at that. They're incredibly good at piano. Here's and a you great don't example. Know that when I talk to a mechanic, oftentimes mm -hmm. I will be like, this person is not very bright. And I'll have that thought. I'll fully admit that. That that guy knows how to get into a car in a way that I never could, and they understand. Has value in a post apocalypse. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Where is that guy? But also, we he, need to get to San Diego, Jake. Yeah, but it's just like he learned that. Like you could learn that. Sure. Well, it's and a you skill. would have just but, as but much. But that's the thing a, is, you I'm, would have just as much. I'm projecting my own intelligence, right? Which is like I have very, I'm very good with words. I'm I'm very very good with words, right? So then, if someone isn't as verbally intelligent as me, I can be like, oh, I'm smarter than you. But it's like, well, they could be smart in a million different ways that I'm not, you know. Like we we are put into different. Here's another example. Like yeah, you know but that show. There are people that are. You're dead set on there being hierarchies that they're not real though. They're not real. They're in your head. There's just people who are better at things than other people are and this and flip it sure. around any way you want. Like there's skills I mean, I agree and specialties. With that too, a lot of like in a lot of scenarios, but I just feel like there has like there are people that have like mental issues that are not as intelligent, right? But I, I just don't I don't feel any need to label it that way necessarily. We don't need to be in a hierarchy where we're like, I'm above you well, on the no, intelligence I scale. I mean, I'm not meaning it like they are better yeah. than them in any way. It's just like, well, it, isn't it true that there are like people that actually are smarter than other no, people? I'm saying no, because think of it this way. Let's go to the survivalist, right? Like that show alone I was really into and the premise is you have to go survive in the woods, right? Yeah. You gotta survive in the woods. These survivalist guys, you think they're well read? You think 
think they know about Dosta Dostoevsky? You think they can interpret philosophy? No, they can't. But they know how to survive in the woods. Yeah, I understand. So all of imagine that. we're in the post apocalypse and you got fucking Albert Einstein and the survivalist. Well, now who's thriving? Well, yeah, but there's, now who's thriving? But there's also has to be some people that just aren't good at like anything that they do, right? Woo. That aren't necessarily smarter. Like, what if there's someone that's a good survivalist, book smart, really like um, emotionally intelligent as well, and then there's a person that's none of those things? Like, wouldn't you say that this person is more quote unquote intelligent than no, the other be, one? No, because I think that no, because I think that's playing into this game of hierarchies, and I just don't think that's productive. Well, it's not and I, I, you know what that is saying? Better, I'm better than you. Uh, it's not I think that's what that wants to do. Though, that. Shannon. I know, but it's just like it's not like the person's saying, "Hey, I'm better than you." It's just like they actually are, be like quote unquote. Why? Why though? Better at these things than they well, are. Well, yeah, they can be better at particular things. I'm comfortable admitting that. The mechanic's better than me at cars, but then why do I need to abstract it and be like, but I'm still smarter than you because I'm good well, with I words. I never said that they have to tell that to the person. Well, no, there, but there's no need to tell it or to really think it because it's just not as true as you think it is. It's treating it like it's a fact, but it's really not. There's also a context here, right? That was my point with the wildlife guy, right? It's like, well, yeah, in a context where we live in a developed society and we all have computers and there's writing and books and all these things, yeah, Albert Einstein can thrive. But if all that goes away and we're just on the, uh, in the woods and we're stranded, now who's smarter? I don't know, but there's now some who has all the power. Now who has all the resources? Either of those but no, but see, but do you see how that's averted? Like, I definitely think a lot of people are smarter than me. Way smarter. Why? Because I can see it. I can see how much better they uh, learn things. How they can like, I think you're smarter than me for sure, and you would definitely think that too. But I, I no, I, I don't. I disagree with you. I, I don't. I don't think there's anything productive Maybe about I'm thinking in that term. Maybe I'm better at you in like uh, some things. You're more emotionally intelligent than we're, me. We're really caught up on semantics well, right no, now. No, we're not I, caught on semantics. No, I don't. We're think not so. on semantics because this is the world of the hierarchies, and I think it's an ugly world to live in. When instead you look at life more as like, look, we're all here. We're we're all fighting the battle against life, right? We mm. all have our different roles. We all have our different tasks. There's no need to put people and to and to look at yourself as being better than others or smarter smarter than others. You don't need to do when that. I, when I, know, I say, I'm when not I, arguing with you. When about I say that. semantics, and this is what I'm trying sure, to say, sure. Shannon is saying, you're saying intelligence, you're saying smarter. Danny is speaking in all around terms. Superior, better at this, better at that. I'm like, not saying but superior. Why, why, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is that we are caught up on this idea of designated book smart stuff as intelligence and other things as just skills that you learned. I think that the point here is that we don't need to prioritize we don't need to divide these skills into specific things it's perfectly reasonable to say that like tom brady is a fucking genius when it comes to throwing a football sure. because he's actually doing math every time he throws that football sure. you can you can turn anything into intelligence when you're talking about somebody's skill at doing something mm -hmm. so like we're we're very caught up on this idea that like you know, well, well, smart people like opera and spaceships like that's all math or or fine art or, you know, it takes it takes incredible intelligence to do these things. But it takes incredible intelligence, it takes incredible aptitude to do almost anything extremely well. Mm -hmm. And personally, I believe every single human being on this planet can find capacity within themselves. Mm -hmm to do things at an exceptional level. Maybe it's and just a work ethic it's, thing. Well, it's not just, sometimes it's sometimes it's like if somebody could be an incredible violinist and they have the aptitude or to do and that. On, and opportunity too. And opportunity, if you are growing up on a, if that person happens to be growing up on a, on a island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean where it's just them and their small clan, then they'll never see a violin. They'll never know that they could have the aptitude to be a great violinist. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, and that's what I'm talking about too. There's the structure around it. You know, but here, Shannon, here's some things I think you'd be much better at than me. Uh, consoling someone who uh, whose parent just died, you know, like I'm landing, sure, a, landing a role would yeah, be, acting, you know, you know, you know so know, much like, more about acting than me. Like, I, I don't think I, I think that looking at a world in this way where people are smarter than others is just not. And, and, and especially in the world of art, too, where it's like and maybe I'll even double back on that and say, like, well, no, but you know what nobody can do? Nobody can act like how you act, Shannon. Right. I can't make jokes how Jake makes jokes. Is, is Jake a better comedian than me? No. Am I a better comedian than Jake? No. Like we both have different skills. And you know what I have that Jake will never have? Danny. And yep. Jake has Jake. Like, yeah, but there are some stand-ups that are better than others. Why? I don't think everyone. Why? Is, 
How, why do you get to dictate that some are better than others? Because they have more fans, because they have more money, because they sell out bigger rooms. Like that, it all gets so subjective that I just don't think it's a productive way to look at the world. The world of hierarchies is a dark world. Yeah, like I think Joe Rogan's I actually mean, a really shitty stand up and he has shit tons of fans and like whatever. So it's all, when we're talking about art, it's all subjective. Like I, I yeah, fundamentally but you guys don't. I haven't seen a stand up that was just like, what are you doing in this career? Yeah, of course I have. So <laughs> what are you talking about? So you know you're better than that person. Well, in the end, like, I, I what I would say is that my my objective skill is that I've connected with more people than them, you know? But there was a point where I was a shitty stand-up and I wasn't connecting with anyone. And I, you know, and, and it can take time to build and, these things. And you also, like, Shannon, you also just kind of told on yourself a little bit because you said, what do you mean you don't think you're better than that person? Like Danny's saying he doesn't think he's better than that person. He thinks he has worked on it more. He's listened. To, he's, he's put in more time to it. It's it's not a matter of being better. It's just a matter of being different at where you're at. And I know so many genius stand up comedians that are struggling and poor and don't have many fans. And I watch their material and I'm like, this is fucking gold. Gold. I mean, one of my favorite comedians, Gary Goldman, who is very successful, but like isn't Louis C.K. level or whatever, like Chris Rock. You know, I think he's a fucking genius. I think he's the best stand up ever because I just I love his material so much. The world doesn't agree with me. Capital doesn't agree with me. Like followers don't agree with me. But like that's my personal view of it. But I, I think in the end, I'm sure Gary Goldman sleeps well at night because he's like, I fucking love what I do and I, I do it my way. You yeah, know? I, no, I you with me at all. Everything you're saying, like, I feel like we're like debating two different topics right now. And like, I'm agreeing with everything you're saying. Yeah. Like, I agree that that's all unfair. But I also think that there is a side where it is like like objectively I do think people have more strengths than other people I, I guess I guess what I would say is look in the end there's no way to prove most of these things you can't prove that you're smarter than anyone and IQ tests are like widely debated yeah and when you do that I think you're actually putting yourself down you know you're creating this world where if if I'm smarter than you Shannon then other people are smarter than me and I'm live somewhere in this hierarchy and literally what does that do for anyone yeah it doesn't. That's my ding on OP. No, I agree. That's my ding on OP. Yeah. And totally normal impulse to feel. And also it is just his opinion at the end of the day. Like when she is like saying, tell me, do you think you're smarter? Like it is just his opinion that he's quote unquote smarter. Like that doesn't mean it's a fact or Great. it's other people's opinions either. Exactly. And that's that's my point. And why, why are you subscribing to the hierarchy? That's my right. one and, thing and, on him. But now, also with her, too, like you're you're pressing him so much to tell tell you this opinion of yours yeah. it's not a fact at all it's not a fact no. and she so she though is is forcing him and, th and this is actually what i think is that she wanted she wanted this fight. she wanted a fight she wanted a fight and and why here's why because she was insecure because he had a pretty major academic success and that's that's where the my mm. whole initial pushback on the partner in this situation is you are making a victory of for your partner about you by doing ding, this ding, 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 and that's horrible yeah and yes. isn't that what happens in the world of hierarchies right because then in the world of hierarchies your win is my loss yep. why just let it be yep. someone's win and no yeah. and that's and i this is something i'll call myself out on when i was in my mid-20s and really struggling to kind of like you know working really shitty sales jobs and like you know not getting paid not a lot of money to be out in the field at 3 30 in the morning and like getting yelled at by alcohol buyers oh wow um it i was definitely living in hierarchies when my partner was on a roll and good things were happening for her and you know i i didn't take that the right way i thought about it in hierarchies yeah. i looked at myself as a failure because i'm this i'm this fucking bottle jockey bouncing around <laughs> into a boulevard you like that that's what i called myself in that job just like goddamn bottle jockey I love that. um but uh it, and that was a good lesson for me in the long run through that you know that wasn't a terribly toxic relationship but i was putting in i was putting in a lot of toxicity to it through that through that regard and once i was able to get a grip on that and realize like this is a dumb thing for me to be worried about i need to be supportive of my partner like i'm an infinitely better partner now off of that one single realization mm -hmm. so it's like and when i hear this partner doing that it's like ooh, that sounds like some that sounds like some 2015 jake and that's not I, 2015 jake had some shit to work on well i love that you shared that jake i look i think i think these are all very normal impulses but in the reason I'm, I'm going on about this it's not that i obviously shannon i have met someone and been like oh okay you your light isn't on in there i understand what you're saying 
But I, I think in the end, we're actually hurting ourselves by by looking at the world in this way, you know, because like especially in that situation too, or like, you know, I've I've been with someone who is a very high earner and you, then it's like, God, this is your partner who makes a lot of money and you're mad about yeah, it. I, you fool. You yeah. have more resources, more fun times. I'm and you're so sitting excited there. to be Jackie's trophy, trophy boy. I'm so excited. She's going to make so much money and I'm just, I'm, Ooh, I'm selling, healthy. I'm selling weed and I get to do funny podcasts and she's going to make so much money. Yeah, it's going to be great. And when they uh, live in a new house, this will be our new recording yeah, session. We're going to have our own room that Jackie can't come into. No, it's <laughs> there a joke. We go. Um, I, this out. does, this does bear bring to mind the song pinball wizard which i think Ooh. really sums up what we're talking about here the whole song is like and they really slam the pinball wizard through the beginning of the song of like i can't remember the lyrics offhand but it's basically like he looks dumb as shit he can't do anything deaf dumb and blind kid deaf dumb blind kid sure plays a mean pinball i love that song and it's a good reminder of like yeah this person to you might be might not seem like they have the lights on, but they might play a mean pinball. True. And you don't know what that pinball is, so never count anybody out, never underestimate anybody. You'll live longer and you'll be a stronger person for it. True. And also a lot of a lot of my stuff comes from my insecurity. I think I've talked about it. Like just my sister was like, quote unquote, so much smarter than me because she was book smart, not even book smart, like just a harder worker, seriously. And I didn't understand that, though. So anyway, a lot of it just comes from my own. insecurity. Here, here's a way feeling. to put it. I think I, maybe this will help. But like I, I think the ego ego wants hierarchies to be real because ego, when we get a mm, win of some yeah. kind, then ego's like, we're on top. We're on top right now, baby. We're on top of the hierarchy. But the problem is the fall, you know, yeah. the the inevitable aftermath of that. So here's what I would say to you, Shannon, putting me in this hierarchy place. If somebody came up to me and they were like, I'm much smarter than Shannon, I think I should replace Shannon on the show. Mm. You know, I would say, go fuck yourself. I want my Shannon. Oh, that's Shannon. hundred so percent. Not from concentrate. Doesn't need to be good at pinball. Either. You don't need to have any kind of specialized skill. We're all fucking human beings. So let's have a good time. Well, actually, I remember when you like were looking for new uh, host when Sarah just left yeah. so it was like the episodes right after you kept like describing the type of person that you <laughs> yeah, wanted yeah. and you kept saying you wanted a, a woman but her to be bookish and I was like damn like I'm never gonna yeah. be able to be in the running for it <laughs> and then you described all that then wound up with like Jokes McGee, yeah. the, John, well, I the said, John funny I said man. Bookish man. girl and gay improv guy, which <laughs> close enough. You got yeah. like a 50 50 on um, both enough. of those requests. There we Blank. go. They just cheered microphones. Blanked with toxicals. Anyway, let's get into the mechanics of this, though. I really did enjoy that discussion. Yeah, um, that was a uh, lively, lively I conversation. Know. I think there, and this is a lot of what I've been saying is based on a book I read called The Courage to Be Disliked. Another self development book, I will say, throw it on the list. He it's loves all, them. It's all about, it's all about about this uh it's really great but anyway i want to get into the mechanics of this because i think this is a thing people do they want a fight so part of that can be like they want conflict but i i think what it could be is that ego is 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 driving her insane and she might actually want this relationship to end because it's so painful yeah. for her because she's so fixated on this hierarchy that she lives in the mm. the repeated pushing of the point the fact that she did not let him get away with that. She wanted him no, to she say, wanted him to yes, say wanted him yes, I'm to smarter say. than she yeah. wanted because him. that this is one of my favorite ways to avoid conflict is to just tell people what they want to hear of like, I'm not doing this with you right now. Like you want a fight. I'm not giving it to you of like, for example, just like drunken guy at a bar when I was bouncing of just like, well, you think you're better than me? No, you're the king of Australia. Are you kidding me? Look at you. You're the best man on the planet. Now let's get outside of the bar. Yeah. It's just like, don't disarming, do the, yeah. yeah, just disarm them. That's yes. a bad example. Cause it's obviously antagonizing, but they're very drunk and they're just like, I am the king of Australia. Yeah, they run with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> That's right. You know you can't beat me up. No, no, you're too. I did say that one time of like, well, you think you can beat me up? You know, you're strong as an ox. You'd kill me with a finger. Please leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good response. Yeah. So I, I think that that was actually her MO here. And uh, for these reasons, I mean, let's read a couple comments. Mutual butt squeezing. That's a, <laughs> that's a great username. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. YTA, I might have said NTA if your comments didn't make it perfectly clear how arrogant you are and that you're yet another I'm just being honest asshole who has zero social skills. No, no. And let me double push back on a likable thing he did. 
he characterized it as a pretty major academic success. He didn't inflate it. He abstracted it and kept it pretty major. He's, I think that's pretty it's modest. It's easy to gloss over that that was even a factor in this story. Oh, he I, really, last night I completely forgot right? about that. It, it makes it so much worse. He didn't harp on it. And it, for all we know, it could be like he could have gotten his doctorate that day. Yeah. Uh, something like that. We don't. I'm, uh, that's a big one, but we don't know yeah, what it is. Yeah, he didn't inflate it. Yeah. He, I think that's a probably. And he, tried, he tried repackaging the pitch twice mm -hmm. he was it there was no ego in this he was clearly trying to avoid a fight i yep, think so i think so too esh girlfriend shouldn't have put him on the spot and kept pressuring him from an answer but he should have dealt with it better sure sometimes we are put on the spot that doesn't excuse rudeness intelligence also means the capacity to recognize and deal with these situations with tact yeah Ooh, another layer to a to intelligence there I, I t does oh, an IQ test test for tact? I think that it does day, not. No. It does not. So Context, true. nuance, all that good stuff. I think some the only part of this where OP does come off like eye rolly for me, and I feel I I'm this way with so many different types of attitudes. But the whole like harping of like I'm just honest. I'm just truthful. Like when you keep reiterating, like I'm the kind of guy who's just going to tell you how it is. Right. And he's not a tell you how it is guy. Usually a tell you how it is guy is, is a dick. Uh, but it's the I'm the same way with anybody who says, trust me a lot. Or like the more. Oh, you, yeah, yeah. It's actually a Vince McMahon tenant where Vince McMahon's a fucking crazy lunatic. But he has a thing where if you ever tell him, I'm going to be honest with you. He never trusts another thing you say again of like, oh, oh you have to specify yes. when you're being honest. I, and yes. that's crazy and kind of paranoid. But he has a point. Of, I can't stand when people are like, well, to be honest or honestly, I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, so oh, you not wow. yeah. I had this one guy who would say it in front of everything. And it was like almost like a tick or something. And I was like, stop saying it. I get it. You're just being honest. <laughs> Let's and just they'll lay say that it, across. They'll say it too, where it's just like, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like this orange juice very much. Like, oh, thank you for your right, brutal right. honesty. I know. <laughs> I think my dad might do that. Oh boy. AITA for telling my girlfriend, I think I'm smarter than her. Uh, I'm actually kind of vying for a soft ESH. I do yeah. think yeah. that going around the world like this, thinking you're better than other people, thinking you're smarter than other people, lose the thought. You're hurting yeah. yourself too. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point. No, he's, he, there is some, there is some eye rolling here and I do feel like they're, you know, I, I could understand why she might be insecure with her intelligence here we don't have all the details sure. there but it's not still not a healthy thought and you made a very momentous day in your partner's life about you and not not even about you about your insecurities yeah now you guys are in a fight and you're in just... a fight with your doctor boyfriend now look at you <laughs> yeah actually it's not too bad after all <laughs> <laughs> it was a shot fired all right we're gonna do a request here we're gonna wrap up on a nice light note here we go. AITA, because I brought a bottle of ranch into a restaurant. Last night I went to dinner with Michael. It was our third date and he took me to one of his favorite restaurants, a hole in the wall Polish Hungarian place. Ooh. We ordered our food and he ordered a sampler so I could try a lot. There's very few things I don't eat with ranch. I just like it and helps make some things easier to eat. So I always have it. <laughs> when we got our food, I asked for ranch. The waiter said they don't have any and offered to bring out some of their sour cream and dill sauces. I tried them and they just weren't the same. Told Michael I'd be right back, took my wallet and left the restaurant. I had seen a convenience store close by when arrived. So I went, bought a bottle of ranch, came back. Michael looked shocked but didn't say anything and ate his food. The food was great and we got some convo going when the waiter came over and said outside food wasn't allowed. <laughs> I said... Oh, no. Dressing isn't outside food and they didn't have what I needed to enjoy my meal. I didn't want to ruin the evening, so I took it out to my car and returned. When we finished and left, Michael thanked me for coming out with him, but said it was really off-putting that I had to leave and go buy a bottle of dressing instead of just going one meal without it. I told him I wouldn't have had to do that if they had had ranch or dressings like a normal restaurant. He didn't walk me to my car or anything and just left. I went home and told my roommate about my date and his attitude, and she asked me if I was being serious. She thinks I had bad etiquette and embarrassed Michael to the point he was probably going to stop talking 
talking to me. I don't think what I did was really all that bad. It was a condiment, not a meal from someplace. Was I wrong? AITA. I, I want to <laughs> just throw it on the table here. I think that part of the reason this got such a strong reaction is OP went with the napalm of condiments. Like you could not have picked yes. a condiment yes. that eviscerates anything that was prepared for you faster. It became than ranch. ranch. It just oh. becomes ranch. Yeah. It's the zombie well, there condiment. There are some people that are obsessed with ranch what specifically. Is, what is ranch? What, what is, is ranch? What is it? What is ranch? What is it? Cream? It's like cream. I'll say this. And Let me say this. Your run of the mill Hidden Valley Ranch. Ugh. Yeah, it's buttermilk right. ranch when done well. That is oh, yeah. a sauce. And I'm not saying like ranch that makes all food sauce. worse. Okay, guys, like, it's sorry, go, go ahead, Jake. Uh, I want to know what ranch is. That's okay. more important. Buttermilk, salt, garlic, onion, mustard. Or maybe okay. the herb. So Herbs and spices. So it's like white chocolate Thousand Island dressing. Wait, mixed into a sauce based on mayonnaise. Yeah. Sour cream and yogurt are sometimes sometimes used. I think I've okay. liked ranches I, with yogurt. I think I've had I yogurt think, based I think when ranches, ranch is a little like runny and buttermilky and it and it really pops, that's when it's really well, at its, it's best. Well, it's great to dip any like fried oh, shit in. Oh, carrot, carrots Amazing. and ranch? Well, are you actually, kidding me? the one tell, so my, my entire life, I've talked about this, I was the pickiest eater ever. And my... Nana would always have a veggie platter with ranch dressing. And I always just ate the veggies because I hated the ranch. But I would try it like every couple years. Yeah. <laughs> and and then all of a sudden, Update. one year, <laughs> I just liked it. That, there that's, we go. So that's how that's I know. You. I love that. Thank you. And that's how I know that taste buds actually do change. Because oh, yeah. I would try it all the time. Hated it. Hated it. Yeah. Boom, one day, liked it. Well, it's an interesting question. Did the taste change or did did your taste change? Is it, you know? Maybe. Anyway, we don't need to get in the nature of taste. <laughs> uh, well, now I know what ranch is because yes. uh, you honestly could have told me that they just put a goat into a processor and it's ranch blended comes goat. out. But people, who, but people who do like ranch, it's kind of their entire personality. It's, it, it's a I've little. I've never met look, one of these people. Really? No, I that's. Know a I few. do. I know. Okay. I know some ranchers. <laughs> Let me, I'll throw some dates. Ranch nuts. I will. I will say nuts. to leave the date without even asking permission. That's an addiction. Permission. Or saying what's going. Yeah, that's weird. You're going to leave the restaurant. Well, I would say unannounced. You don't have to say permission. Yeah, yeah unannounced. Un unannounced. Yeah. unannounced, yeah. Please, sir, may I go? Permission. May I leave the date? I mean, I would ask, like, hey, is it okay if I just run and get a condiment? I, I just, think, the food I think I, giving know. that, that's actually a good, I like that you said it that way because Wait, I think say, you are that. kind of putting up a flag of like, look, I'm about to do something kind of fucking bonkers right now yeah. that ah, I'm going to go and yeah, get some ranch. Because I would kind of think it was like charming a little bit. Like I would laugh with them. It's I would a think it cute. was funny. Yeah. I You're would, kind of breaking up the dinner. There's a rapport you build during the I dinner. I would be a little you know? make it like, I think you can make it like funny though. Yeah. You know who funny. this is? You know who this is reminding me of? Oh. Emily from Bear in Mind. Oh boy. Leaving leaving oh, rehearsal this, and auditions early. Girl? We have talked this about her on girl, the pod. Chicken fries. In college, we have since checked on her profile. She has started to eat other things, but in college, all she ate was chicken fingers. Chicken from, fries. Chicken fries. Chicken fries, excuse me, from Burger King. And the peanut butter dream at Jamba Juice. Which is a cake. Yeah. That it's, was her whole diet. That was it. And she would leave things early that she had to be at. Like she was not supposed to leave early. She would leave Why? to make sure she, she wanted to beat get, the rush. She could get to the chicken fries and the Jamba Juice before they closed. That's I don't know if they disgusting. had she had them both together. I don't know how that works. Oh, but. here's the ingredients of a peanut butter. <laughs> oh, okay. Fat free vanilla frozen yogurt, vanilla soy milk, 2% milk, bananas, peanut butter, a chocolate mood dairy base. So guys, this is and not ranch. healthy. And no, ranch. No, it's a cake. Ranch. There's, ranch There's ranch in there. In there. There's ranch in everything. They don't tell you that at Jamba, but like every, it's ranch all the way it's down. It's ranch all the way <laughs> down. <laughs> um, I do think this is super harmless, though. And like, no, you're if, not. if someone did this to me on a date, I would. It wouldn't be a deal breaker. I, I'd be I'd like, be how else I'd, did you do on the date? Uh, it, it would need to be an absolute like. Wow, like Jackie might be one of the only people who could have done this and it would have flown. Like well, it would have been one out of a thousand what, for me where I wouldn't have kind of checked out. It's not out. the leaving. Yeah. Let me clarify. It's not the leaving. It's the, I refuse to eat this. This food is weird. I'd be like, listen, I like to eat interesting cuisines. Like, Oh, did she say it was weird? Yeah, she said, uh, she, she was like digging them. Like what kind of restaurant doesn't have ranch? And it's like a lot of a them lot. don't. Thai, Thai food, like get real. Yeah, like, yeah, no kidding. Have you ever had food before? Yeah, it, it seems a little like how we always talk about the picky eaters who won't 
try things. It's like it gives off like an immaturity, like teenage vibe a little bit. It's it's uh, it's sometimes stubbornness can be charming. This is not one of those times. And it's very stubborn. It's very unflexible. It's closed off to experience. Yeah, you know? it's like have a meal without ranch. And that's where I'm saying addicted is coming in of like your palate needs ranch for anything. That it's you childish. Eat. It's yeah. that's I, where I, that's yeah. where she would lose me. Or right. I, it was just like, I like, uh, am going to need you to be to able to eat this. food. Without. Yeah, I'm out. No, I'm out. I'm yeah. saying if they left to go get a condiment, just that I would be in. But and again, no, if she is... went and got some like aioli or something like kind of snazzy, I would at least be like, huh, I'm still not into this, but you have a very specific taste. It needing to yeah. be ranch oh, is yeah. just like. Aioli and ranch are like the same thing. They're the thing. same thing. Oh. They are the same thing. Based, I mean, they're both mayonnaise saying, based well, condiments. Mayonnaise, is, ranch, a, ranch, mayonnaise, ranch mayonnaise is, is a canvas. Too, <laughs> what are you going to say? Picasso? Everything's a mayonnaise, really. Monet are the um, same. They both oh, use the same. What, I'm, what I think I'm trying to get at here is that True. something about it being so ranch is very base in terms of just like it it is like i hate a ranch salad like why am i eating a salad if yeah. there's ranch, <laughs> ranch salad. where are you going where are you the midwest are you pizza? kidding me you want ranch salad Ran it's no. a dressing it's like a salad a dressing salad or no, people yes. put ranch, ranch on salads no i know but you said ranch salad Guys, yeah, it's ranch. literally a dressing it's a ranch I feel like I know, but dressing. he called it a ranch salad. That's not a uh, dish. Uh, well, well, yeah, I, it's not dude, called a ranch salad. Caesar salad. When you tour the Midwest Caesar again. Caesar has enough texture where it's its own salad. When you go to the Midwest again. Cobb salad. Tell them you Cobb want a sal salad. side salad with ranch. Yeah. And tell me that that salad is more salad than ranch. No, it's, it's not pretty terrible. Nasty. No, the salad, the salad is pretty depressing. So YTA, Nitorino Bino writes, the waiter and your ex will be telling that story for a long time. Let me say that. That detail also rung very false. I don't really buy what waiter says there's no outside food to a condiment. That's like ridiculous. I hope that's true because that's the funniest part of this whole story. A waiter clocking that and being like, hey, get that ranch out of here. I think they so, just wanted yeah. to embarrass them. Yeah, maybe. I mean, that's that's a bizarre move. But I don't look. I don't think she's. I don't think she's an asshole at all. Because the peculiar, notion, peculiar, weird, deal breaking, bad dater. Plenty of things I can say. But bad dater. She didn't do anything wrong to him. She was just a weirdo. I I mm -hmm. think you know how you make this classier. You know how you would have gotten me to be like, okay, I fuck with this. You pull out. You you came prepared, and you got a little travel bottle oh, ranch on with hand. You. I would have found that to be like, oh, that's like a signature for you. Yeah, but you nah, said that, that the that thing breaks you didn't the same like deal about for me. it that was breaks that the she's same putting deal. it on this like. I'm trying to make a joke. Sounds like it she's still, there's place. no jokes. It could have been <laughs> if she had like a cool little golden vial that she keeps her ranch in yeah, for just this occasion. Thing. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I, I still would be very What is that? It's my off. elixir. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, honey. Ooh, it how nice. It looks like uh, viscousy white cream. Cream. Mm, what is that? I call it ranché. I knew you were going to do that. I knew you were going to do that. You know me. I saw that coming. Yeah. AITA, because I brought a bottle of ranch to a restaurant. I don't see any assholes here. Uh, no, nah, it's it's a it's yeah. a it's no Clean assholes break. here for me. It's a botch. It's a botch for her. It's though. A, yeah. you if you're gonna be a ranch girl, you should have your own ranch with have you. You shouldn't be leaving. You look insane leaving. Yeah, that, that, that is where insane. it's just like I gotta have it. I gotta have it. Yeah, that. Yeah, 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 you look. <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to wrap up here on just a little sub mini. We just wanted to cover this. We were trying to, you know, always cover some submissions, but uh, it's pretty wild. Uh, shouts to Shannon for summarizing this. AITA for being frustrated for paying for everything. OP21M is dating a 30 year old woman. They make the same amount of money, but he pays for everything. She takes a lot of time off, spends her money frivolously on herself, but never contributes to the ship. She has a lot of free time while he doesn't have much time for fun because he's working so hard to pay for her lifestyle. She doesn't return any favors. It's just a nightmare. She also doesn't have sex with him, barely wants to, always an excuse as to why not. Whenever he's brought up the finance issue, she'll say, well, don't pay for anything for me anymore. And then when they go on dates, she just won't eat. So he ends up paying for both. He's just trying to see if he's in the wrong. And if so, how could he go about this and make it right? Run! Run! Yeah, what are you talking I about? Know. And you're 21 and she's 30. Get the fuck out of there, man! Oh. 
like you deserve to be have like these are your years to be like having a good time and spending yeah. your money on like going to parties and Coachella and like doing fun stuff. You are getting scammed. Yeah, and you're just paying for this 30 year old <laughs> woman to just like live her life, honey. Yeah. That is so oh goodness. And also you she kind of like I mean most not all but you know most times when you're by the time you're 30 you're making more than you were 21. So either he's doing well or she's doing not yeah. so well and then preying on him. Totally fucked OP. Get out. Yeah, Just. Cause she, I think he also mentioned like, she's not a good worker either. Like she takes free time off and yeah. like, and, um, here's and, yeah. here. I got a solution here. One last spend, one last spend. You get on to Southwest, you get on Southwest.com, you get yourself a want to go away ticket, but it's for her. You tell her I'm taking us to an all expenses paid destination and you put her on a plane to Dayton and you date in Ohio and you never and she, get on that plane and you just fly her there. She's trapped. She can't get back. She doesn't have any yeah, money. Yeah. Now she's just stuck in Dayton, Ohio forever. <laughs> All right. We're putting that in Jake's crazy <laughs> solutions folder. Uh, I think it would have worked. For B. How? She would know you weren't going on the flight with no, her, Jake. No, you could have tricked her. This doesn't make sense. Okay. All right. I got another oh, one. Oh, boy. No. All right. Hit us with it. 1-800-SPIDERS.COM. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> bear, bear, bear. For being frustrated. What are there all these spiders in my house? Jake, quit doing your bit. <laughs> AITA for being fr Is that one of your little jokes? There we go. We need that as a sound I don't sound do bite. little jokes. Oh, yeah. I do big jokes. AITA for being frustrated for, for everything. OP, it's a whopping uh, NTA. Run. She is. I don't, I don't have any yeah. I don't have any designators for this one. I'm just going to say run. Yeah, get out there. Get out of this relationship and start living your life. This is a survival situation. <laughs> Guys, get Albert Einstein and go out into yeah. the woods. Date Mark Zog. <laughs> Here we go. Make some sausages. Do whatever. Just run. <laughs> but she is smarter than you. All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Much love. Full we'll see you next time. Rate, review, subscribe. Join us on Patreon. And we'll see you next time. <gasps> Bye. Bye. Jake, you just lost. You 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 lost